Hey guys and gals and welcome to another video from the team here at BlenderTech.com. If you enjoyed or learned something from the video, consider liking it and consider subscribing for more Blender, Unity 3D, coding and all sorts of other CG related videos. Lastly, don't forget our motto, create your way. So today I'm going to be showing you how to use drivers to make uh, clockwork basically. Um, I released my video called Drivers 101 where I explained how to use drivers uh, more or less in their basic form over about uh, 45 minutes and I had a great response from that. It seems a lot of people are quite confused about drivers and uh, how they work and what they're used for and so I thought another good thing to uh, add for people that don't have the hour or if they're just interested in something like this. Um, say you had a scene where you wanted a clock that kept time accurately or just for the practice of using drivers in um in interesting and different ways then i thought this would be a good quick tutorial to make so all i've done here is created um a simple clock it's it's just all meshes um i am not going to go through I'm not going to model it for you guys that if, if you want to know how to model a clock I'm sure I can make a video basically it's just a circle and then it's just got uh, an hour hand a minute hand a second hand and then it's got these hour markers which just have a circular array on them and if you don't know how to do circular arrays watch my video on circular arrays and Sorry, it's got hour, hour markers and minute markers. And so we're going to make this clock so that we can set it to any time we want or to have it run itself using drivers. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to be using drivers, obviously, and we're going to be using custom properties. So the effect we'll be going for is such that um, when you have this custom property of seconds, when you turn it up, obviously 60 seconds makes the minute hand point to one minute. And 36 seconds, one hour, has the hour hand pointing to one hour. And we can go through a full 24-hour period. Being as there's 80, 86,400 seconds in a day. Now my values aren't perfect. You can see they come a little bit off. The errors add up a little bit um, in the end. But what we can do too is we can we can now animate this the second value because we can't we can't adjust we can't adjust these values and have it stick. It goes back to zero because they're run by drivers. So we're gonna animate our custom property. So just to show you this, on frame one, if I insert a um, if I insert a keyframe onto um, the second value here of zero, and then just say go up to whatever amount of frames and go up say. Um, 43 200 so that's 12 hours and then insert another keyframe with i you can see if i hit play it plays a full 12 hour animation and for some reason my second hand is going backwards as well very interesting don't know why that's rotating counterclockwise but oh, i suppose i could go minus hand sec but now everything's running smoothly so yeah again basically 60 seconds is one minute so you can see it moves to the one minute mark uh 600 is 10 minutes so you can see it moves to the uh 10 minute mark and the hour hand goes around a bit and if we were to go to half hour that would be um 60 minute or 60 seconds in a minute times 30 that's 1800 seconds so 1800 you can see the minute hands at a half hour and the hour ends halfway between uh, the first one and the second one so how do we accomplish this well all it involves is simply having uh, the custom property for setting seconds that we can animate and then setting up the curves for the minute hand and the hour hand so let me show you how to do that so we've already added our driver to the Y rotation value of the minute hand, the second hand, and the hour hand. So starting with the second hand, 
just get rid of this extra one here. Um, I have a variable named han sex var, and um, I'm by the expression for the scripted expression for the driver is negative han sex var um, to give us the value that we need. And the path that it takes is this one right here from this object. So I just copy this data path from from this data right here and go right into this box and then control V to paste it and hit enter and it gives us that value. And then we take our curve and we make sure it's proper. So we make sure that that um say if I was to put in 60 seconds. Basically, this one doesn't really matter. We're just making sure that it rotates properly. So at zero seconds, our input of zero gives us an output of zero. As you can see, zero and zero. I don't have it 100% precise, but it's pretty close to precise on everything. And if I go to 60 seconds, one minute, find out oh, there it is so a value I guess it's negative 60 because it was running the other way but um so negative 60 gives us a value of negative 360 so it's obviously gone around one full rotation so all I've done to make sure that's worked is um, just adjusted this curve to make sure that at every single point it's it the value is correct so I just tested in a few different places I would put in something like uh, 10 minutes you know 600 and then I'd go find it on the graph again and make sure that 600 seconds that's 10 minutes aligns to while well, 10 minutes is um, if 360 is one minute then obviously 3600 would be 10 minutes so we get the value of 3600 right there for the input value of 600 seconds so it's again driving the rotation now on to the minute hand again we are taking the uh this the seconds value um this would be the exact same one so it's a single property from the object uh the second hand object and we're taking the data path of sec that we've set up the custom data path here under the object panel and to do that, all I did was I added one, I edited it, I called it second, uh, the value was zero, the minimum was zero, and the maximum was um, 86,400, which is the amount of seconds in 24 hours. So that's just how what I did for that. Anyways, back to the minute hand, the exact same thing. We um, basically, I just tested it at various points and made sure my curve is right, so we know that Right now, we're, we have 600 seconds of an input. So I take that, so this variable is called var. So I take the variable var divided by 60 because there's um, 60 seconds in a minute, obviously. So that gives us a driver value of 10. So when we have a value of 10, we want 60 degrees of rotation. So uh, with 600 seconds, I divided it by 60 to get a driver value of 10 um, and making sure that my my curve corresponds so that when it's at the value of 10, so 10 minutes, it corresponds to 60 degrees, which is um, pointing obviously to the 10 minute mark. And then I obviously again tested it at a different time. So if I put in say 60 for just one minute, Make sure it's pointing at the one minute mark and to verify that again, I found it. I'm just gonna hit the button to find it quickly. So when we get, um, oops, I'm on the second side. I want the minute hand. So when we have a, of, um, a value of one minute, it goes six degrees. So there's six degrees for every minute 10 minutes is 60 degrees um, 
one hour it's 360 degrees and then moving you can see i have a little bit of air in there i didn't get it quite perfect and then those errors add up over a full a full day i guess and then on the hour hand again exactly the same so we're at one minute here so what i've done is i've taken the exact same thing and just divide it by t divided it by 12 and so basically um in this case one minute gets us roughly half a degree of rotation but if i was to change the value of seconds to say 3600 so that's um that's one hour i go back to my hour hand And so in my driver value, so when my input is 300, I made sure to get a rotation of 30 because um, 360 degrees divided by 12 hours gives us 30 degrees for every for every hour. And there's there's other ways to do the math for this. This is just how I did it. Um, like I said, there's lots of other ways to do this. This is just the way I did it. Um, so I'm not going to walk through all the steps. I think that makes quite enough sense in itself, especially if you watch my Drivers 101 video. But just wanted to show you how you can make a working clock in Blender using drivers and having to only animate one value. So again, like I said, I now have this animation of an exact working clock give or take a little bit of air, but that can be fixed by just adjusting my curves a little bit so that they are exactly precise. I, I got fairly precise, but it's off by a fraction of a percent, as you can see at the very end. So yeah, that is that. Is that. And you could, you could go reverse. I, I had originally was going to do it reverse doing hours, but I decided that it was kind of backwards. But yeah, you could, you could go reverse and have an hour set up. But um, it would involve a lot more math to have the minutes and seconds um, go according to the hour, but it it does work too that way. So yeah, that's just my quick little um, driver clock tutorial. I hope it uh, helped you out. I hope it gave you some more ideas for drivers. And um, I do suggest watching my Drivers 101 video. It actually goes into depth how everything works, the curves, the input and outputs, um, how to do scripted expressions, how to do different options. Uh, and um, how custom properties work in full. This is just kind of an overview of one way to use them. So anyways, thanks for watching from the team here at BlenderTech.com. If you enjoyed this video and learned something from it, please like it and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. We're now on Twitter at Twitter.com slash Blender underscore tech and Facebook at Facebook.com slash Blender tech page, all one word. We are very soon going to be start posting we're very soon going to be starting to post some articles on uh, blendertech.com. I've got some of my um, original friends that I created the uh, the brand and website with um, helping me write some articles. So expect that very soon. If you dislike this video for some reason, please tell us why. Don't just hit the thumbs down button and leave. Instead, leave us a comment telling us what you did not like. And... If it's private, email us at info at blendertech.com. That way we can continually improve our videos based on your community input as per our original goals and values for Blender Tech. We also take requests and call for help. So if you're having trouble with an issue and time permits, we can make a video for you. So see you next time. Remember, create your way.